Wonderful. All right. So here we are. So thank you for coming to the Rolling Hills Tech Night, uh, where we're going to talk about all sorts of very excellent things. Uh, before we get started, we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, look, now, I, now that I clicked on Zoom, I can't click on PowerPoint. Uh, so I'm Matt Shea. I'm the Chief Technology Officer. I've been with the district eight years. Uh, and I have here that I like cats. We, we thought we'd share something fun about ourselves. So we, my wife and I foster cats. This is number 81 and 82 that got adopted this weekend. So if you ever need cats, I'm your hookup. And then next to me is... Uh, I'm Nick Lasso. I'm the District Technology Coach. Uh, I've been in the district just about a year and a half. So last year was my first school year. Um, and I absolutely love it here in Vernon. I get to travel between all six buildings and work with students and teachers um, and other staff. And it's it's been a, a, a great thing. Um, I also don't sleep. And the reason I don't sleep are these two wonderful children here. All right. So these two little weasels are mine. Um, I have Emerson and Maverick. Uh, so Maverick has just turned 11 months old and Emerson's about to be four. So um, with that and trying to balance everything in the district too, uh, I get very little sleep, but that's okay. I, uh, I'm, I'm working on like five hours and I'm good with that. So, all right. Come on in. So Have a seat. Everybody. You can sit close. You can sit in the back. We've, we've got some space in the, yeah, in the pit the back there. Yeah. Yeah. We have all sorts of space. Come on in. Uh, before I dive in, and again, in case I, I always do this, in case you forget everything I say, we have we have a handout going around with some of our links. Look, and now I can't see it. Yeah, no worries. I'm a mess. Uh, I have on the Rolling Hills student page, the top link is this handout all digitized. So if you're like Matt, you gave me a piece of paper and there's links and I can't click them and I don't want to type them. All of it is here for parents. Right now I tucked it under the student screen because the parent screen is for the district. But so the Rolling Hills student screen has everything I'm showing you tonight is right there, and I'm going to share that out with parents and teachers after we're done with this today. But I just like to show that up front. So again, if you forget everything I say, there it is. So what we're uh, planning on going over tonight <laughs> is what is the goal of Chromebooks in our district, anyways? What are they for in the classroom? What are they for at home? Uh, what programs can you do at home to help support learning and enrich learning? Uh, what are the logistics of our Chromebooks? How do we take care of these things anyways? What happens if they break? Uh, and then I, I like to also talk about internet safety. Uh, I think maybe I even surprised some teachers yesterday. They did the, the ways that we try to protect students that they may not have even known about. And so certainly the parents probably aren't knowledgeable. So we like to share you know, what we're trying to do even after hours when your student's using the Chromebook at home and, and you know what we do legally and what we do because we think it's the right thing to do. So that's what we're going to try to cover today. So it's a, a packed list to do so we're gonna we're gonna dive right in here so the goal for chromebooks i'll, I'll give you the the slide here to provide access for students to extend or enrich their educational experience both in and out of the classroom uh, my goal as tech tech director for my tech department is that the technology should be seamless we we need kids especially at this age level to learn how to use technology but the goal really is that it's seamless it's another tool in their tool belt just like a pen and paper are, they should be able to just use it to get to access learning. That is the ultimate goal is that they're just, they're still learning. It just happens that, oh, here's a, here's a Chromebook or here's whatever tool that they're using. So my goal is that it, to try it as much as possible. And I have the teachers over here that might say, Matt, it doesn't work all the time. Um, but my goal is to try to have it working as much as possible. So the kids aren't thinking about the tech, they're thinking about the learning that they're doing. And so that's that's the goal for at home too. So if you had heard Chromebooks are coming in, coming home. Why are they coming home for seven and eight year olds? Why you know why are why is the district trying to do this? Uh, Dr. Anderson had a vision. And by the way, thank you, Dr. Anderson, for having us tonight. Uh, she kind of had a vision, like you know, it would be nice to be able to offer more learning opportunities for students. Can we do that with technology? Can we do that in the classroom? Can we, what's that look like at home? And so I was like, yeah, we can do all of that because, you know, I believe in technology or else I wouldn't be the tech guy. Uh, so our, our goal for home use is that to continue the learning opportunities. It may or may not be to piggyback off of a teacher's lesson to do digital homework. Or, you know, they may not even be giving digital homework. It could be that you just want an opportunity. You know, your kid is struggling in math and you want to give them some ex extra math lessons. Your, your student's not a great reader. Great. Well, here's some more learning opportunities with, with our software. Maybe you only have your work laptop that you come home with, but you've got three kids, and so you can't really let them steal your laptop, great, we're gonna give your child the opportunity to access that instruction from home with, with our device. Uh, we'll talk later about uh, about logistics, but if you say, you know what, I don't really have the internet to support 
my kids learning from home. We'll help with that. Right? Mobile hotspots. We'll talk about. It. I'm, I'm still something now. Mr. Good. Lasso's thunder here, but it's all good. But that that is the goal to not not even necessarily uh, to to do more of what the teachers want to do. It might be more of what you're aware of. You know, we want your help as parents to help students get excited about learning and be engaged. And so this is one way to do that if they have the technology accessible at home. And we say, great, here's some programs you can already use. If there's some programs you like, great, have at it, you know, jump on it. It's just trying to give more opportunities to students at home. So what can you do at home to support learning? I think I know, I think I know this part. <laughs> Uh, so there's, uh, we kind of separate this into, you know, some of the, what can you do and what kind of should we kind of stay away from at home? So uh, the school does provide several resources that we use, several digital resources that we use within the classrooms that the students can access at home as well. So the importance of, of kind of pushing this access with Chromebooks is a lot of our, a lot of our stuff is all linked together. So by utilizing their Google sign-ons, then they can access a lot of these different sites this way. So, and if they're is a site that they don't, they do have an independent login that's provided from the teacher that's usually in their agenda pad. Um, but for the most part, uh, a lot of our stuff is all linked together and that, that's the goal so that it can kind of be streamless and when we're at home or at school, we can be kind of utilizing some of these resources. So some of the large uh, larger resources that we um, utilize in this building are Reflex Math, which is uh, a program that works on the four basic operations and the fluency within that. So it really gives the, the students some ability in some of a gamified way to be able to focus on increasing their, their overall math fluency. Uh, Amira is a new product that we uh, started utilizing this year, which is uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, yeah, no worries. Artificial intelligence uh, reading tutor. So the students actually read to the Chromebook and the, the tutor actually gives them some insight back. We also utilize a benchmark assessment, which helps us kind of level where our students are. Um, that's something that we started implementing this year. So really kind of cool program that we've been, uh, we started at the beginning of this year and we're learning as we go. But from a language arts standpoint, this is a great thing for your students to be able to kind of practice quickly for reading and kind of give some great feedback on that. Uh, Typing Agent is another program that we have within the, the district and within the school here uh, that gives the ability for the students to kind of practice some of their typing skills. The great part about providing some Chromebooks to go home, organically, some of these things are going to increase regardless, just by having a little bit more time. Um, and the big thing I want to, I kind of want to get through here is that we're not pushing this to be able to just have more screen time. We really want targeted screen time. Um, so that's where the kind of, yeah, let's not do this kind of comes into play. Um, so the, a lot of the, a lot of the programs, now some classrooms utilize a couple different uh, programs, depending on what their goal are, goal is in the classroom. But pretty much these are, are some specific ones that are used across the, the grade levels. So what we don't want for students to do is to give them a device and just spend hours and hours and hours on YouTube. OK, so that is not the goal for these Chromebooks to be going home. So, um, you know, we have some things in place that uh, kind of can hope, hopefully modify and prevent that. But obviously, we're looking from, from the parents and the family standpoint, too, to, to help us, uh, you know, with that. So non-educational games. So, we, you know, again, this isn't a device to go home to be playing something that you shouldn't. Um, the great part about our device is that only students with VTSD or only people with VTSD.com logins can log on to them. So they cannot, you know, if a you know, parent or another sibling that's not within the district, they would not be able to get on the device without the student's information. Um, and we really want to limit the amount of screen time. So... Uh, the question that's come up, you know, talking to some parents and talking to faculty around here is like, all right, well, what is the expectation? Um, and again, we we talk about this frequently, and even being technology people, um, it should be targeted and there should be a balance, right? So I think kids should be kids, and I think kids should you know, play outside as much as they can. But if we, and I'm stealing this from you a little bit, so, um, but I but I agree with you. So I think right around 20 minutes, you know, a day really, really would be kind of the sweet spot. Um, for a kid. So and that's, you know, and that can happen anywhere, right? So anywhere with internet access, if you're, you know, if you're uh, have any siblings that are waiting for games, or if you're somewhere that has uh, internet access, or, you know, if you have a phone that has a, a hotspot on it, um, I utilize things like that. Uh, so anything like that, just about 20 minutes a day. And with the programs that we showed, they're targeted to be around that time. So, if, you know, for example, Reflex, you know, it's around 20 minutes, okay? Amira, um, it's pretty quick. Um, the stories, you know, at this level are, you know, 10 to 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even less. And I think exposure is, is key here for us um, with, with all of these things. I gave, I gave yesterday to the faculty, I gave kind of like the worst case scenario that we all lived through in pandemic times. And so if you have second and third graders here, 
I mean, during the pandemic, they were probably K and one, and we're trying to put a five and six year old on Zoom for seven hours. Like it, it was never going to work. A studies so they shouldn't have that much screen time anyways, and B, you know, twenty minute after twenty minutes, the kid's attention span was gone. And it was like, well, that's that learning for at least a couple of hours. And that's that's all they can get through. So the goal is not to do five or six hours of screen time a day. Even our even our teachers don't use that much in the classroom. They use it a decent amount in the classroom, um, but and that's not the goal at home either. It really is just like get in, do do a targeted, you know, in, in enrichment, and then yeah, go outside and play, hang out with the sibling, go play with a cat, you know, whatever. Yeah. And if you need a cat, you can rent a couple. Exactly, I know where you can get some cats. <laughs> you can rent a few cats for it. Um, so, and I think uh, a lot of talking to the teachers too. This is going to be a rollout for us. So there's going to be um, some conversations that happen over the next you know couple weeks and months, and what works, what doesn't work how we can kind of tweak it, just talking to the teachers as well. Many of them are going to kind of create some sort of digital choice board or maybe, um, you know, one of our teachers here is creating a digital bingo board. So activities that students have the ability to do without it being required, you know. So the, the whole point of this is to be able to give, extend the school day a little bit more and give parents and families the access to devices that if they wanted to, um, you know, try to enrich their students learning a little bit more at home, they can, um, and plus utilizing some of the district resources that we use during the day. Logistics. Logistics. Okay. So the big conversation, which uh, has come up several, several times, is the charging situation. Okay. So um, we do not have the ability to, to give a student, each student, a charger at this point. So we do have charging carts within the building. Um, our Chromebooks, the models that we have on a fully charged Chromebook will last about eight to 10 hours of usage, okay? So many times, again, students will use them for an hour, kind of close them down. If they're fully charged, even without charging, it's probably going to last most of the week. So um, where this might kind of come into play a little bit is on the weekends. So on the weekends, if, you know, your child is on it, you know, frequently, again, we're trying to look at maybe about 20 minutes a day, but on the weekends, I think it's important to spend some family time. Um, but the charging will take place uh, at the school. So we did have a faculty meeting yesterday and talking about where this might take place. So when they go outside to recess, kids will be able to plug their Chromebooks in. Um, or if there's going to be a time within the classroom when they're not going to lose or use them for a long duration, plug them in to kind of get a little juice. Um, if a student comes in and their Chromebook is completely dead, uh, we do also have spares here. So that also goes for, you know, by chance if your child forgot their Chromebook for the day, that's okay. We do have some spares that they can borrow for the day um, to kind of get through and what we need to do. Um, but the Chromebooks that we have are, are great. You know, a 10, 15 minute charge will give them enough juice to be able to kind of make it through what they need to. So just, e being, being a nerd, I tested it myself. And so in 36 minutes, which is a little less than a, a period at Glen Meadow, in 36 minutes, I got a 40% charge to the battery, which should give around three hours of life. And that, that you know, here, that'll easily get through yeah. the day, Absolutely. If, not, if not longer. So, and, and that's going to be something that, and we'll, we have some um, optional accessories if, if you choose to do at home as well. Um, so again, these are completely optional, but uh, parents, some parents have asked us about it. Some faculty have asked us about it. Um, so this universal Chromebook charger is $14.99 on, um, on Amazon. Anything that's a, it's a USB-C charger uh, with at least 45 watts, that will do, um, that will do the job if you choose. So if you say, listen, I want to have this at home for my child just in case we want to charge it, um, you know, that's totally fine. Also, we put uh, a set of headphones on here. Again, $12.99 and on Amazon. They don't have to be this version. This was just one that I saw that was affordable that kind of fit the, the whole uh, uh, thing that we were trying to do. This works very well. Anything with a microphone works very well for Amira. So Amira, um, since it's detecting the students' voices, any kind of microphone headphone is great. Um, I would not recommend buying your child this elaborate gaming headset and try to bring that into school. So let's not do that. Yeah, if you're um, at a hundred fifty dollar yeah. turtle beach, like yeah. you know, that, that might yeah. be overkill. Yeah. yeah, let's not do that. But, but we don't get the ones with little cat ears. It's yeah, and the ones that yeah. blink, those are good. And they don't distract <laughs> teachers at all. So feel free to buy as many as you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just wanted to give a couple of uh, options. And again, this is just a few. Feel free. Some, you know, most devices now are coming out with USB-C charging, um, even Apple devices soon. Um, so those Apple users will, you know, not be happy. You stole that from Matt as well. Um, so hey, you've got it, about a year. Man. Yeah. So you got a little bit of time. But if you have, a, if you already have a device at home that uses this, you know, that would that would be able to work as well. So. And uh, Mr. Lasso brought up a good point yesterday. Um, if you have, if you know, you have your student here at Rolling Hills, if you have a sibling that's at Lounsbury, Glen Meadow, or high school, they probably already have a charger at home that you just use. Mm -hmm. it, it is the same device. It's a Dell 3100 Chromebook, 11-inch Chromebook with with the 45 watt USB-C chargers. 
But again, if if you don't have a charger home, you're, you're still probably going to make it through the week, and then we're going to charge it here at school. So it should be fine. If it becomes problematic, yeah, and, then, and that's where we're going to start having those discussions. You know, we're this is something that we're we're in the test phase of, and we're going to recalibrate when we need to and uh, do what we need to uh, each each day. So one piece that I do want to uh, talk about. So each device, so every student in this entire building is assigned a device to themselves. So this is new for this building. So previously we had Chromebook cards within the classrooms that students just kind of used the ones that were in there. So there is a de dedicated device for each student that is in the building. So um, that is something to, to make sure there's literally a label on the device with the student's name. Um, so that's gonna be important. So if you by chance come home and you're like, that's not your name. Um, you know, somebody, <laughs> somebody that would might never just, happen. Yeah, somebody might have just switched devices, uh, but just something to be kind of conscious of. Uh, while you're looking looking through. And they do travel between classes. So previously, they stayed in the, the house model for each of the classes. Now they will be whatever homeroom they're in. It, it travels with the student throughout the day as well. So um, And to specials and all the other classes. And that helps kind of prepare them for when they go to, to Lounsbury, because like, Lounsbury is a much bigger building than this. And, and so in fourth grade, they start traveling all around the building carrying, carrying that device. Certainly by the end of third grade, we want the, the students to be comfortable with that, to be ready you know, when they go to Lounsbury. Da -da. There you go. So repairs. Uh, I, I'm skipping ahead a little bit to, to one of your slides, but uh, right now you're, you'll notice I'm not having you sign anything. I'm not giving you like a policy. The six through 12, if you have a six through 12th grader, chances are you've already signed <laughs> at, uh, the back to school forms. Um, so six through 12th grade, yeah, we have a dedicated policy. We have a repair policy when they have to pay for it, when they don't pay for it. For Lounsbury, uh, there's been so little breakage. We're like, if it breaks, just bring it and we're going to fix it. So if something goes wrong, we're going to fix it. Give it to me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to break it. Just, just give it to me. If it really becomes problematic, like if your kid breaks it three times, maybe we need to have a conversation about maybe this just shouldn't come up. Maybe we're, we're just not ready for it. Uh, but that's our, our goal is not to, to put it all on the backs of parents, especially at this age group. We, you know, it's a bit of an experiment. Again, we've been doing one to one for eight years, but this is the first time we're bringing it back and forth. Besides the pandemic times, um, you know, for for Rolling Hill students, for seven and eight year olds, you know, uh, if there is a repair, so we do all our own in house repairs. I'm really proud of the program, so I like to spotlight it here. So at the high school, we do internship programs because we have career and technical education programs. And they have to do a 15 hour internship, and, and we're like, I have a fully functional IT staff. They should do internships with us because there's some basic stuff we can do. And so, some kids that stay with us really do some advanced things down, down the road. Uh, so in the picture here are some of our former students that were some of, in our internship program. Uh, Ryan Flaherty um, and Matt. I'm having trouble spitting out his last name. It's yeah, before kid. my time. I still see him around town. <laughs> um, but so we have a, right now we have five interns and I've got a line of another five waiting for the second semester. And so any repair that we get, whether it's my trackpad's not working, the battery isn't lasting, I, I, I accidentally knocked off my dresser and I, we broke the screen. We ship it up to the high school, the students at the high school fix it, we send it back down, and it normally takes only a day. So if, if your child has a problem, you know, you can notify the main office here and just say, hey, we had a problem with my, my child's device, we're going to have them bring it to the main office, hopefully the teacher can help, you know, get it up to the main office. And we'll have it fixed, you know, within normally within 24 hours. And our point person here in this building is Miss Alfonso at the no, no sorry, Christo. Christo, sorry, I almost told you wrong. Mrs. De Christo. So if there is a, an issue at home, um, you know, feel free to contact the teacher or you know, if it's something that happens. Um, but Mrs. De Christo is our the contact person that then will take the Chromebook, you know, put in the correct work order and kind of get it back to us when we need to. So if you're looking for a point person to contact, you know, that would be somebody to do that too. Yeah, and and we understand they're kids. So yeah, like uh, they're pulling out of their backpack and they drop it. It's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. It's fine. We're gonna take care of it. So don't 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 worry about it. All right, this is back to me. Internet yeah. safety. So what are we doing when the kids go home? And 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 maybe you're aware of some of it from pandemic. Maybe you weren't aware. So that's why I want to talk about it. And I like to have the conversation with parents, anyways, because we need your help. Like as much as we talk about how to be safe on the internet. You know, I, you'll be surprised, but if I had to spitball a number, I'd probably say 40 or 50% of our third graders have cell phones. Like that's, it, you know, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's a fact. And so we, you know, this is like the new sex talk. We have to talk to students about being safe on the internet, how to protect their private information, how to, how to you know, how to just be safe. So here's the part that the district is, is trying to help with. So we have a number of laws that we abide by anyways. The biggest in New Jersey is the Children's Internet Protection Act, 
or SIPA, um, that says we must protect students from mature content. Uh, there is the Children's Online Privacy Act that says we must protect their identity and their, their private information. The Electronic Communications Act, how much we need to store, how long we store it for. Someday when your third grader graduates from Vernon nine years from now, I will keep their information three more years past that. So when they're a senior in college is when I finally might delete something. And as we were talking before, I actually don't delete it. I think we've got 20 terabytes of stuff in the cloud right now. But um, So there's a bunch of laws that we abide by anyways. Uh, for Children's Internet Protection Act, it's a bit of a gray area when we have to protect students from mature content. But my interpretation, and, and that of our attorney as well, is that if it's our Chromebook and our Gmail account, it's, it's all of our accounts, that even if they're at home, we sh that it should still be in effect. So we should still be protecting that student from mature content, even if it's nine at night and they're doing homework or not doing homework, and we should be paying attention to that. Can I piggyback off of that real Please. quick? So there are times um, where, you know, a student might search something up and, you know, something will pop up, right? So it is somewhat of a cat and mouse game sometimes with Google, um, you know, with images. Most of the time, it isn't really mature content that would come up. Um, it might be something that might be inappropriate, like a cartoon with, you know, holding up the a choice finger or something like that. Um, but again, like, we, you know, not only does Google kind of police that, we as well, once if something like that comes up, we then kind of police it as well. So as much as we all try to do what we can, sometimes there are things that pop up. And if there is something that pops up um, that you, you know, you feel it is inappropriate, we always like to see a screenshot or something like that. So then we can kind of see, all right, well, why is this, why is this happening? But for the most part, we have very, very little issues. Right. Um, and when we're talking about mature content, like there's nothing that really comes through, but sometimes there might be inappropriate for this level um, right. that might sneak by that you're like, why, why can they even see this? Um, and it depends on you know, it, how it's this, labeled and all this kind of great stuff. Right, and this comes back to my, my conversation that we, we really need to partner with parents and we need your help. As great as I think our filters are, if your kid goes home and hops on the Chromebook for five hours unattended, they're going to find something. They're, they're, they're going to get something. Like, they're, you know, we, we need your help to keep an eye on them, not have them on that for five hours. Um, you know, so it comes back to having a relationship with the parents and, and us trying to do our part and talk about safety, but having you do it as well. The, the program that we have in place is called Securely. And so this is actually a, a teacher screen. And so the teachers in real time can watch all the kids' screens all at once. And they can lock the kids into one website. They can push out a website. They can close websites. They can see, well, all these other kids are doing their Google Slides. But this kid's looking up Fortnite on YouTube. Why are they going off the road? That would never happen. No. Um, so this, this is what the, the, even a teacher sees. A teacher has a lot, a lot of power these days to be able to control their classroom experience. FYI, and, and this was more of a pandemic time thing, they can do this anytime the kid child is on that Chromebook on their vtmd.com account. So that could be after hours. I don't think anyone's doing that now. In pandemic times, we were kind of doing that a little bit. Um, but the only reason I say that is if you say, hey, I, I, I don't want to use the Chromebook, and I'm going to have my kid log in with a vtsc.com email account on my home computer, we might see some things from that computer because the child's logged in with our account. So, you know, make sure to either have them sign out or don't let them put their that account on the computer because we might begin to filter some things on your home your home machine. So, uh, but the Chromebooks we definitely are doing that. So I, I definitely like to just point that out. Above and beyond that, um, so and again, we're already protecting for mature content. I have certain sites just outright blocked, trying to block games, but it's like whack them all. Yeah. Um, you know, but there but there's other content that we really look for. So also with this product. Uh, we get certain alerts when we see a keyword, and that keyword can be if they do a Google search, if they go to a website that has the words, or if they have a Google Doc with the words, if they do an email with those words. And so some of those flagged words are because we want to make sure the child's okay. So if we see anything that is self-harm, bullying, violence, we're going to get an alert that myself, Dr. Anderson, and our superintendent and our director of security get at any hour of the day. At Rolling Hills, I don't, I don't anticipate any problems. At, La at Lounsbury, you know, at Lounsbury, we've had, I want to say, in like eight years, I want to say one or two calls home after hours. But Dr. Anderson worked at the high school for a few years. It was, she would tell you, it's, it, it's pretty frequent where you've got a kid that is in distress, and we want to make sure they're okay. So we'll call home on a Friday night at 9 p.m. and say, Hey, could you do me a favor? Could you just go check on Susie? We saw a disturbing search about how to tie a noose. We want to make sure she's okay. If we don't get a hold of parent. We've sent police cruisers to houses to do a wellness check. 
there's a gray area in the law whether or not we have to do that, but we all decided as an administration, we think we should be doing that. We have the power to save a child. We're going to save a child. Um, and so even after hours, we're doing that for you as well. Uh, hopefully, again, we're not going to see that from a seven or eight-year-old, but but just in case, you know, it's going to happen. Dr. Anderson is well-versed since she's been at the high school. You know, and we got some at, at Glen Meadow as well. But um, but that's that's part of this tool as well is just kind of a wellness piece built into the filter. So we covered a lot. Uh, and hopefully we, we assuaged some of your fears and gave you some information. And, and there's a few of you here. Do you have any questions that we can help, you know, fill some gaps and fill some holes? And again, remember that. We think we have a really good plan based on what we've been doing at Lounsbury Hollow. So we think it's going to run really great. But at some point, uh, like Nick said, we may recalibrate and, and change how we're doing some things to make it fit this age group. But any questions from anybody? So the the I'll, I'll kind of prompt this because uh, <laughs> this might this might stem a few questions. So the goal right now is to actually send the Chromebooks home starting tomorrow. OK, so, um, you know, this might be a surprise to some parents um, that didn't show up today. So um, but there will be communications going out from the school itself and talking to many of the teachers. The, the teachers themselves will be sending out communications tomorrow, um, you know, talking about this. So uh, that the kids ahead. are very excited yeah. for them to come home. and yeah. haven't heard any of that conversation at home yet ever since they got assigned their own individual Chromebooks um, back in December. The question of my daily day is, are we taking them home today? Is today the day they go home? And I finally have to tell them, well, they get to go home tomorrow because they are ecstatic for them to come home. I don't know that they under quite understand that they're not going on five hours of YouTube on their Chromebook. We've been trying to explain that to them within the classroom too. I know I spoke to my students today in both classes and just kind of laid out, like, I know you're very excited to take Chromebook home, but the reality of the situation is, here's what the expectation of myself to you is on your Chromebook. Like I'm looking for you to enhance your learning. You know, I understand. And we do have fun games at home that we weren't even talking about like Prodigy. I know you've all heard of that. Some of you have access at home. So those are other things that make learning fun. That's, so we've had those conversations in the classroom as well. So it's not all on you to go home and they get home tomorrow and they're like, I'm going on YouTube. And you're like, that's not what it's here for. We've talked to them too. <laughs> there are a few teachers that are going that have an assessment that's already been scheduled for Thursday. So they ask if they could just wait in case they don't come back tomorrow night um, and to get back into that into that routine. So I think you know that's fine. They'll explain to the children how to <laughs> There are just after hearing uh, Sarah talk. There, there are a few websites that are free during the day that some teachers use. That then are um, that cost some money, so it's their it's their business model. So they give it free to schools. And they try to get parents you know parents to pay for it. So one big one is Epic, um, which is a, a great reading collection that we utilize in the school districts. Um, if it is something that makes sense for your family to purchase because your child is really, you know, really into, you know, some of these high interest books, it might make sense to be able to do that where you purchase a, a membership for after the hours. But these are things that are not required, but they are um, available to you. So there are some sites that we utilize during the day that, you know, um, if they're district, district purchase sites, you have access to them at all times. But there's some free websites that give them free for teachers during the day until about 3.30. And then they try to make the teacher or make the parents pay um, at night. But again, th there are plenty of resources as well. Um, you know, we do have some um, some free resources like Tumble or Tumble Books is one that we pay for. So even if your child really likes Epic but wants to still read something, there are some other options. Um, and, you know, teachers, you know, any of the administration here, you know, Matt and I, um, if you have some questions on, well, you know, what are some other things that I can be doing? You know, please feel free to reach out to us and we can kind of you know, talk you through some of those. Yes. Is there like a generic list of websites that are kids? There are. That's a that's a great question. So um, on Rolling Hills student page, we have links to all the websites that the students use. Okay. So um, it, the only ones that would not be on here if it, if it's used specifically in a classroom. So if a teacher maybe you know, for example, there's a few teachers that are piloting certain programs. Um, if that's not on there, but I know that a lot of teachers are are actually creating. Um, like a choice board that's going to have all of the links for their classroom right on either the student school G page or it's something that they'll they'll have for them. Um, but this is kind of the launching point that we put we try to you know upkeep and all of our students stuff is on here. Um, so then this is also where like a lot of the interconnections come through. So students log in through these links and then they'll be able to just kind of sign on with Google or just kind of signs them on already. So 
question. That, that was a great question. So we got that piece. I'm going to put some people on the spot over here. So we have uh, when when Dr. Anderson asked Nick and I to come in, we said, well, let us talk to some teachers about how they're using it, what their hopes for are at home and stuff. And so we have a, a tech committee, and these are two of the outstanding individuals from our tech committee. So Sarah Strongalsi and Adam Romano. Uh, Sarah, you're second, yeah. second grade teacher, and Adam's our tech teacher here, our computer teacher. Um, do either of you had uh, you gave you gave some good insight on some of your conversations you had? But do you have any other input that they could do from home or how they could help us, how they could help the child? I'm just looking forward to having uh, students having the opportunity to do some of the stuff that they really, really love to do already in school. So some of the stuff like Typing Agent, like Prodigy, like Epic are some of these things that the students look forward to as an incentive when they're done with their work, if they have a little bit of free time, if we have an indoor recess day, if they have 10, 20 minutes on their Chromebook, they look forward to doing these things in school. So I'm just excited about the amount of buy-in naturally from a lot of our students that yay, I want to go home and I want to do Prodigy. I want to do Typing Agent. So that's just a little positive to look forward to. So it's not like, okay, we have to keep a tight leash on the kids because they're just going to go on YouTube. I don't really think it's going to be as big as an issue as, as it might seem. But I yeah, added, I, for, for you, I added on the list code.org. So if the yeah. kid really loves STEM and engineering and stuff, and they, they want to be a coder someday and they like playing those games, I had a code.org onto that list so they can go and do some block coding. And that's it. And with the, a lot of stuff that Adam does within his class, you know, the kids have a, you know, a short amount of time and what one day a week usually, a week you know, so if a student is, you know, a student is very interested in something that they did in Adam's class, they usually don't get to do it again until the next week. So this is where you can get somebody excited about a particular topic and then they get to go home and they can utilize some of the resources by, you know, accessing through the Chromebooks on some of the things that Adam is doing within the class and other teachers as well, so. Some of the teachers are going to be putting their homework assignments on a Schoology rather than having paper and pencil. Um, so that will be a little bit, but that will not be the majority of the teachers. Uh, and really, we really want the Chromebooks at home so that they can do that extra, so that they can sit on and do the mirror, so they can improve their math skills and their reading skills without anyone necessarily having to give them an extra assignment. It's on there, it monitors, the teachers will be able to see how long they were on there and how they report, and it will be at their level. So they won't have that frustration. It is recording what their level is. They won't be sitting and looking at something that's just too difficult for them to complete. So that is it's going to increase as their skill level increases. Um, and, and especially with the third graders with the uh, standardized tests coming up in the spring, the more familiar they are with their own Chromebook, the better it will be for them when they sit down to do that standardized test. That's like driving the car you want to drive for your road test all before you go for your road test. You're going to be comfortable with that device. And that I think is very, very important. And and some of the initiatives that we're that we're putting forth here at the school as well, um, speaking kind of to the NGLSLA testing, um, you know, what we don't want students to do is is get to the test and be like, I know the answer to the problem, but I don't know how to answer it, right? So part of the goal of this as well is to get familiar with the different systems and some of the resources that we're utilizing do mimic certain aspects of the NJSLA testing. Again, not everything is, you know, we don't teach to the test. That's not what we do, but what we don't want is a student to actually have the answer to something and not know how to answer it, right? So that's one of our big goals here is to really just get them more familiar with the devices and how to access certain things um, so that it isn't, you know, a month before the test, we're doing test prep. It's already happening throughout the entire year. So these are things that are already integrated within our programs that then when the student gets to, gets to the test, they're actually just expressing the knowledge that they know instead of, you know, maybe being, you know, some questions being a little bit more difficult because they just don't know how to answer. And as a teacher trying to proctor the test and sit there and be like, oh, I know all I have to do is tell you to click there and you know the answer, but I can't tell you because the, the park police are going to get me, right? So, uh, you know, but so that's that's part of the goal. Yeah, the old park and, police. And the typing program yeah. is very, very important because you want them to have the typing skills. <laughs> the NJDOE says that third grader should type at 30 words per minute. That is very generous. That is just, do that if yeah. 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 you might like every, every third grader we've tested has been like 14 <laughs> words per minute. Yeah. So 30. And I say, like, sometimes you might see something like, I know I'm one of the teachers that's doing a digital bingo board that homework. It's, you know, a lot of options for you to Google slide presentation. That's like a challenge, 20 minutes on a mirror, 20 minutes on teacher monster. 
et cetera. And I have a resource in my Schoology page that just has like at home math activities. I'm a math teacher, all math activities. And to you, the math activity may look really simple. Like it's really just a basic subtraction problem, but going back to knowing how to use the text next year, the real skill I'm testing them on, or not testing them, but showing them, is the drag and drop its whole box. Like, I, I know they know how to do the math, I know they know how to get the answer, but I need to know that they know how to click and drag into a certain location for it to accept the answer. Using, using a trackpad on yeah, a Chromebook, not a mouse. Yeah. So sometimes not a, not a touch screen, what you're but... seeing is not maybe necessarily the skill at home, it's more of that learning how to use the tools around them on the Chromebook. Because for some of them, the, that trackpad is challenging, it's a little different. So that may be some of what you see at home too. Like we're just getting them used to using it and that they're, it's just second nature that we all really know how to use their phones, their iPads. They need to know how to use this the same way. I know we put up questions for them, but every time somebody talks, I have something else they want to say. So uh, one, how do the kids even get on the Chromebooks, right? So now that we're sending them home, I think it's important to tell you how they even get on them, right? So every student within the district has a VTSD email. So that's how they're going to sign on. So it follows the same format. And if you've been looking over here, it actually, there's a nice, beautiful sign that says how to sign into the Chromebooks. So it usually follows their first uh, dot last name at vtsc.com. If student's names are hyphenated, there's a hyphen in there. Um, if they're a student by chance, if a student has the same name, usually sometimes there's a number. Um, but if you have a question on what your student's login is, you can always reach out to the teacher or myself or Matt um, or you know some of the faculty here. If your student is in second grade, the password follows the, the following format. So it goes off of their birthday. So a two month, uh, two month or two digit month, two digit day, and all lowercase RHPS. Third grade, same thing, but instead of the lowercase, it's an uppercase RH and PS. So it distinguishes between the two grades. Um, this is on the handout. So if you do have a question, um, you know what it might look like. This is this is how you can do that, um, and that stays consistent here. Just because if you know at fourth grade we do allow the students to start setting their passwords. Um, at this level, it's important for the teacher to be able to know their password because, um, you know, it'd be like dirt bike rider 47 and the next thing, you know, we're trying try to figure it out and we're resetting passwords all the time. So at this grade, at these grade levels, we decide to kind of follow this format um, just because then the teachers will know exactly what it needs to be if we need to kind of do anything. And I'll jump in here. Mm -hmm. If for whatever reason they're trying to log in, they, they're really good for the most part about logging in at this point in the year, especially like usually the daily, like they know how to get it. If it's saying like their email can't be found or their Google account doesn't exist, 99% of the time they spell their name wrong. There's a missing yeah. letter, they type it too fast, or they put like a random space there, there's a comma, it's apostrophe. I, if, if they're like continually, they're like, I know I did it right. I just take a look and make sure that it's spelled correctly and there's not a random space. I am telling you 99% of the time, I'm like, you left out a letter of your last name or you added a space. It's almost always that, so don't panic. That is a good insight. Uh, last thing I'll, I'll share is uh, just for more resources, not just what we talked about tonight. I have a, a whole site of resources for just parents at vtsd.com slash tech. That's as easy as I could possibly make it. It'll redirect you here. And you can see I already have all sorts of internet safety resources, cell phone resources, how to lock down your Wi-Fi router so the child can't have internet after 9 p.m. We've got it like all on here that I've gotten from the various techie teachers, like what's important for parents. Um, Genesis links, how to Schoology, <laughs> Cami, like every every tool on that we have in district, I have something probably on here for, for parents, including even a like a support ticket area. So if you need to put in the ticket and say, um, my child's having trouble with this, the IT department will get that and then we can help you. So again, vtsc.com slash tech, everything you could possibly need, or the Rowan Hills students page has like every link and everything I just gave you tonight. So that is about all I have for tonight. I just want to say thanks to these people. So again, our, our tech committee people that showed up tonight, thank you so much. The SEA for coming to support us. You guys are always great. Uh, Dr. Anderson for having the vision of, of trying to create more learning opportunities at Rolling Hills in the first place. The Vernon Township Education Association for supporting us and, and bringing some things for, for you all to take. So if you didn't get a pen and, and notepads and other things, grab those. But they're always supportive of, of tech in the district. So I always like to thank them. Um, am I forgetting anyone? 
staff, of course, is, who is fantastic. But you, you parents, yeah. we're glad that you all came out tonight. For anyone that's watching at home and watching the replay, thank you. Uh, it really is a partnership. You know, we can do as much tech as we want here and talk about internet safety to we're blue in the face. But if we don't have your support at home, you know, kids are going to use tech the wrong way, and it's it's not going to be a good experience. Um, so, you know, we need we need your help, and so we're glad you're here tonight. And, Glad that you're supportive of the program. If you have any other questions, please feel free to stick around. But I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, and that's about all we had for you tonight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.